Hi, Mr. Johnson. Thank you for Hello. joining me. <laughs> um, so good to see you. You too. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, very briefly, uh, let's see. I was born in North Carolina, uh, in Elizabethtown, North Carolina. I grew up there, graduated high school there. And one of my pictures is actually uh, my graduation picture with my father. Uh, I uh, went to school at North Carolina State University. Uh, let's see, from there I went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, and then I started working with uh, Gopher County Schools. Uh, so that's kind of kind of my work history. I've been with Guilford County Schools for 20 years and uh, I've worked various jobs, uh, everything from uh, teaching to administering a federal grant to um, being a curriculum uh, specialist for, for the district. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm here at ECG. Uh, what else? I come from a family of uh, six. Uh, I have five siblings. Um, um, we're all very close. I don't know what to tell you uh, beyond that. Uh, I can tell you cute stories. I've, uh, stories are really, really kind of, the, kind of the fun thing, right? So, um, I worked at Ragsdale High School for for ten years, and that's actually where I met my wife. My wife was a teacher at Ragsdale. She was actually my next door neighbor teacher. She had um, started working there. Uh, I want to say 2005. I might be a little off on that, but you know, I don't require you to know dates exactly, and I can go look that up if I need to. And uh, so we got uh, married. Uh, I think maybe the next year or something like that. And then I left her uh, there at Ragsdale and uh, took a took a completely different job. So yeah, there you go. There's that part of the story. Mm, I don't know. Give me some guiding questions. What else you want to know? Um, what subject do you teach specifically? Oh, I teach, uh, well, specifically, I teach uh, history, uh, U.S. history, and uh, I teach a course, a companion course called Turning Points in American History as well. And I have, <laughs> on occasion, one year, uh, taught uh, English. Um, why did you decide to become a teacher? Well, I had bills to pay, uh, specifically a student loan, and uh, I actually thought that teaching would just fill me in for a few years, and then I would go do something else. Um, but uh, I, I really fell in love with the idea of working with young people and with trying to convey ideas. Uh, it's a really difficult uh, process, but it's also very rewarding, and it can be fun. Uh, and that uh, is, you know, one of the reasons why I, I have stuck with it, um, you know, throughout these years. Um, what inspires you? What inspires me? Wow. So, I mean, I, that's a that's a crazy question. What inspires me <laughs> at any given moment? Uh, what what inspires me is uh, people. Uh, humans are fascinating and uh, just uh, the the ability that that to create a very complex uh, communities and to come up with uh, such wonderful ideas uh, out of those communities and you know that's balanced out with um, you know with the with the side of, of humans that, that can be more uh, you know negative and, and cruel but I think overall um, you know, uh, humans are, are fascinating. Animals are too, right? Did you know there's a spider that lives underwater? Did you know that? I don't think I've ever consciously known that. I, I know. I, I mean, up until up until recently, right? Uh, but there there is. There's a spider that lives underwater. It, it creates a, a sack of air for itself. And it lives underwater isn't that incredible and so i mean little things like that it's uh just a remarkable world um that that we live in and i think uh full of things that make you want to get up in the morning and uh, and find out about yeah i saw on your favorites list that your favorite animal is human so <laughs> eventually eventually <laughs> again on any given day i like a mongoose that that is an amazing creature right do you think that would beat a king cobra snake and yeah it does that's amazing and i like bears bears are cool um what is one of your hidden talents um i can juggle cool. not well but <laughs> i don't usually bring it out all that much but uh let's see other hidden talents um 
That's about it. If you didn't become a teacher, what would you be? <laughs> I've answered this question before for, I think, for, for a yearbook. And my, my response at that point was I'd be a bum. Uh, <laughs> it just probably pretty close right because uh, the one of the other reasons that, that that teaching attracted me was because it allowed me to uh, continue to investigate within my discipline to read and to kind of you know push mostly the directions that I want to go in uh, and so I really do think that it'd be a good chance that that uh, that I would end up like a perpetual student right I'd be that uh, you know 50 year old guy on the college campus and all the kids are going who is he? What does he do? He's not a professor. And like, he keeps showing up at classes. Um, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. A um, lifetime student slash bum. <laughs> um, in which other teacher's class would you like to enroll even for a day and why? For this one, so many teachers have said that they would love to enroll in your class. <laughs> well, mine would mine would be all of them. As a, as a matter of fact, that's um, one of the one of the things about teaching English last year was being able to work <laughs> or <laughs> desperately cling to the knowledge of uh, of Miss Beatty, uh, and um, I learned you know so much about uh, how she uh, you know interacts with students and how she teaches uh, her courses, and so. But uh, you know, I, I you know through the years I have been in other teachers' classes. Um, you know, uh, I, I can think of the many times that, that I have slipped into to Miss Cooper's classroom, you know, for example, because she's talking about something and uh, when I would have my planning period and we were in the module units, I'd hear her talking about something. I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Right. And I go over there and just, you know, just just get drawn into it. Um, and certainly, I mean, Mr. Haywood, uh, Mr. Haywood and I, we've known each other. <laughs> well, I've known him as long as he's been teaching. Um, and uh and so, you know, going into this class. So that is a, that's a great question that I cannot give you a, a singular answer to. Um, I can say that I have been in the other teachers' classrooms and I love what goes on. Um, each, each one of them, you know, is a, is a uh, you know, an expert in their discipline and in their field. And then uh, the way that they, you know, the, the passion that they bring into the, into the classrooms as well um, is, is just absolutely um, wonderful. So. Yeah, it's actually one of the things that that um, I'm hoping to push for, you know, as we as we move forward is is to have more um, cross curriculum uh, interactions, um, you know, between teachers and classrooms. It's just a matter of finding the time to do that. It's always difficult unless you're all of a sudden teaching the class and then, boy, you find the time to go learn some stuff about probably what you ought to be doing. Okay. Um, what is one memory you have from when you were in school or college? One. <laughs> I like the low bar. I don't have to jump over it. I don't have to jump over it very far. <laughs> um, boy, this takes too long. This, this is this is too long of a story. But I, I was um, I was in a book group when I was at North Carolina State uh, University. And uh, we read this book that was uh, a memoir of uh, an Italian journalist uh, and, and a member of the fascist party uh, who had been punished by uh, Benito Mussolini by being sent uh, to the Russian front during World War II. Um, and he, he wrote this book called uh, Kaput, uh, K-A-P-U-T-T. -T, and um, it was about the, the, the collapse of European culture and society and all the rest. But the author was just amazing. And, and I read it and I devoured it and I just thought his stories were so interesting and nifty and cool. And I remember going into the into the book study, just gushing about the book and just being like, this is amazing. I learned so much about what was going on. And the professor who was uh, leading it, um, uh, Alex DeGrand uh, who, of, of NC State, um, he just he just posed one question back and said, oh, you believed him? And it floored me, right? Because I, because I realized the difference between enjoying a story and understanding what foundation, uh, what evidence that story uh, rests on and whether it does. And um, that, that was an amazing lesson to me in terms of, of um, being able to enjoy stories, which I do, uh, but also being able to put them in, forgive me please, context um, you know, of the evidence that's actually supporting the stories. If you could be anyone for a day, living or deceased, who would you be and why? Me. <laughs> I, that question, I, I wrestled with that question, right? But 
No, me. I, 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 uh, I, I, like all humans, want to change myself in some ways, in some fashion. And, you know, we, I think we all have that kind of uh, drive, which is interesting in itself. I'd love to, to think, you know, maybe a little more on that. But self-help book sections are huge. <laughs> Very few of them are, are titled, I'm happy with me. Are you happy with you? I hope so. Uh, it's a very short book. <laughs> but uh, to be someone for a day, I don't know. I even thought about an animal. Like, would it be cool to be an animal for a day? Like, you know, a bird or right? be able to fly or something like that. And my answer to that is still is 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 still no. I, I don't think that perhaps I'm living my own life uh, as fully as I might. So I think it would be foolish for me to take over someone else's for a day. It would just take a day away from them. What do you work towards in your free time? <laughs> so uh, I'm a father of two children. <laughs> so yeah, I try to raise uh, children in this world and help them to be the best possible versions of themselves. Uh, yeah. And, you know, out, outside of that, uh, you know, maintaining you know, healthy relationships uh, with my wife, with my family, uh, with my friends, that's a full-time job, uh, you know, right, right there. I'm not sure what this question is getting at. What <laughs> do you think I have some sort of secret agenda? Uh, I teach history, man. I come home and I read about history and current events. And I think about, you know, how those things fit together. It's not very complicated, right? Let's see. I don't cook. I don't, uh, I don't do mechanical stuff. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, there you go. Um, what is good luck editing this? By the way, I, I am. I, I, you're gonna you're gonna work some skills here. I'm, I'm not lying. What is your dream vacation? My dream vacation. I have been very fortunate. I have I have I have been able to not travel as much as I've wanted to, but I, I, I have traveled and I would have to say like one of the best experiences um, that I had uh, just in terms of where I was in my life and what you know what was going on um, was when uh, my wife and I visited uh, Italy and uh, we went to we were actually in Switzerland, but right right on the border and we went to um, Lake Cuomo in uh, in Italy, and um, that was really an, 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 just a wonderful experience. Uh, we took a, a slow ferry uh, around the lake, um, you know, stopping off at, in all these um, little towns. Bellagio is uh, one that sticks out in, in my mind, and um, so you know, I, I don't know that you could ever recreate things. I think that's part of the part of what we try to do throughout our lives is. Uh, take these cherished moments and, and make them happen again. Um, but that, that I wouldn't mind going back. I wouldn't mind going back. That would be fun. Okay. What can you cook to perfection? Grits. Okay. <laughs> that was quick and easy, right? Because most, most people don't cook grits correctly. Uh, and so then a lot of people, when they encounter grits for the first time, are turned off by this sort of soupy, awful, grainy, um, you know, mess uh, with a pat of butter uh, thrown on top. And uh, I, I have I have made it a, a minor, okay, what do I do in my spare time? I, I convince non-grit eating people to eat grits. That's an interesting choice. <laughs> Um, well, it was more of a calling, you know, sometimes uh, you get choices in life and sometimes you get callings in life and uh, grit ambassador was a, was a calling. Um, you, if you do could, you eat grits? I do, but I don't know if it, if I eat it right anymore. I'll have to rethink that now. <laughs> I will be very happy to demonstrate maybe through Zoom how to properly uh, fix grits uh, in, in such a way. It's really not hard, but uh, most people still don't do it right. Okay. If we join you, do we get extra credit? Not a bit of it. Oh, okay. Also, but think about how your life will be enriched from here on out and forever. Uh -huh. um, if you could have any superpower, what would that be? Uh, pass. I've thought about this one way too much. Probably, pro probably, uh, probably too much. I think I think any superpower would wind up getting me killed. 
So I, I probably should go with something like really easy, like, um, no, nope, there aren't any. They, they are, they are all uh, going, going to get you dead. I'm just sorry, they are. Okay. If you could grow up in any decade, which would you choose? This works. I like this. Okay. Penicillin. Hmm? Yeah, penicillin. I mean, antibiotics. This is a great decade to live in. Wait, look at look at what we're doing here. This is amazing, right? Uh, to 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 be able to uh, communicate across the, you know, time and space. Man, we we've we've conquered so many things. Um, yeah, this works. I'm happy here. Uh, if you want Again, what does Gaddis say about time travel, right? It never turns out well. <laughs> True. Um, if you were to be given a superlative when you were in school, what would it have been? Who? If you were to be given a superlative. No, no, that's my superlative. Who? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, what one piece of advice would you give to your students? <laughs> the same advice that I give every year and then I often repeat don't confuse doing stuff with thinking they're not the same okay <laughs> and yeah that's all thank you Mr. Johnson did I pass yep yeah with 115 <sighs> percent wait you can't go over 100 don't try to fool me I know how that works it freaks the program out when you try to put anything over 100 in. It just goes, what? No, no, no. Okay. Sounds good. Thank All you right. Johnson. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I know everybody really, really appreciates it. Thank you. Bye, Have a great break. Enjoy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.